Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 240 of At Odds with Wrestling. Joe and Adam here. Adam, hello. How are you? I'm doing fine, Joe. Uh, how have you been? I saw some pictures of you getting involved in a kerfuffle lately. Hey, uh, so uh, this is one of those things where, uh, you know, if you listen to my podcast experiences on the week. Uh, so since I recorded uh, Longbox Heroes and Longbox Heroes After Dark, things have gotten worse, actually. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I woke up this morning um, inundated with emails and texts from about 630-ish this morning um, from the fraud detection department from my bank. Uh, apparently, my card was compromised, and somebody tried to purchase one hundred and sixty dollars worth of something through the Apple iTunes Store. Well, I was going to pay it back. Uh huh. <laughs> so it was like six thirty. I was on the phone with them at like seven. You know, once I like you know get my bearings and like whatever. Um, so they're like, okay, like, and I don't know if you've ever done that before where like you get the fraud hit and your bank contacts you. Um, yeah, I actually, about two years ago, somebody just started opening up a bunch of my, a bunch of credit cards in my name. So I dealt with that and I had to, uh, like I did the life lock thing and I, my credit is completely locked down, you know? So like, even if I wanted to go apply for something, I have to unlock it first. Right. So I've dealt with that stuff. So I was just trying to retrace where my card was used that it would have gotten compromised. And I the like and it couldn't have happened that quickly. Like I went to GameStop um about six thirty or so on Wednesday to go pre order the new Zelda game for my kid. Mm-hmm. And that was the only different place that I used my card. And yeah. I I can't imagine like it got picked up from there, but regardless of where it got picked up from it's it got yeah it's not like you bought anything for pro wrestling tees you know no no so that that eliminates one culprit right um so it was like seven o'clock it's like you know and they they call and they're like hey you know they're like we're gonna read you like the last three purchases you know verify if they were good or bad and the first one comes up is eighty dollars at apple you know whatever and i'm like nope that's not me uh, so they put me on with a rep and they're like, all right, we're going to go through the three. And then as soon as they hit that one, they're like, yeah, we're not even going to ask you about the other ones. Okay. So the card is canceled. Um, I have to submit a separate thing cause it was two hits of 80 bucks each. Mm-hmm. So I have to submit a separate thing to get that money back. Um, but then like, you know, banks don't open until nine. So I was on the phone with my bank at nine Oh one. And they're like, well, cards canceled. Um, you know, obviously we could order you a new card, have it shipped to your house, or you could just come over to the branch and we'll give you a new one right now. And I'm like, let's go. I just hopped in the car, went over there. I got my new card, but it's just going to be a little bit of a hassle getting the money back from whatever. But the fact that it got popped on fraud detection works. I'm trying to think the last time something came up on fraud detection. Um, the last time something came up on fraud detection is when I ordered something through the Pokemon site, like uh, the official Pokemon site. And mm-hmm. I've ordered stuff from their site like tons of times over the last like three years. But it was just this last one that came up. They're like, oh, this one seems suspicious. Is this OK? And I'm like, yep, that one's OK. And they're like, all right, no problem. Continue on your way. But these two I was just like, this is, you know, quite a way to end the week, you know? Yeah. Um, Any update on the the car getting fixed? So things are moving along, right? Um, You Mm -hmm. know, the car's drivable. I'm okay. You know, Ace is okay. These are important things. The claim is moving along very quickly, but it's one of those things where, like, while I was dealing with the fraud detection stuff, um, I got the the, the deal from my insurance where they're like, hey, we have the estimate. Uh, We reviewed it with the body shop that you chose, and we're getting ready to issue them payment. That's good. Cool. Because the day before, when I took it over to the body shop, they're like, yeah, we really can't do anything until we have an estimate. And then when you get the estimate, email it to me, and then we'll start working on it from there. And I sent him the estimate, and, like, guy didn't re- email me back and say, got it, thanks. Um, and I called him on my way home from the bank today, and he wasn't in, and I'm not going to bug him. But, like, he, the guy even told me, he goes, there's no reason for you to leave your car here. 
we're going to order the parts when all the parts are in, like being that you live literally around the block. It's like literally I make a left turn, drive a block, make a right turn. I'm at the body shop. Yeah. Um, so he's like, there's no reason to leave your car here. The car is drivable. When all the parts are in, I'll give you a call and you can just bring the car over. Perfect. You just probably can't drive it at night. Is your miss? Are you missing the headlight? No. Oh, so this is the funny thing. Okay, so the headlight still works. It's just the casing around it all is all smashed up. You know. Oh, I got gotcha. you. And right. the it's, guy, it's, when I when I took it over to the guy, he says to me, he goes, "Yeah, you know, um, be careful out there when you're driving. The cops might pull you over for this, especially if you're driving at night, and especially if you're drinking." And I'm like. <laughs> Okay, I go, well, I don't really go anywhere. It's my wife's car. She would be on her way home. I go, I just took my kid to school today. The cops are there. This cop's sitting up there. I drove by. They didn't say nothing. They didn't do nothing. He goes, yeah, you know, if you're drinking at night, just be careful. <laughs> this is this is going to be perfect for my idea to get you on On Patrol Live. Yeah. Just remember to plug the show when you're Oh, that's up. right. So <laughs> I can cruise around with the headlight. Yeah. Out. When I get pulled over, I'll be wearing an ad out wrestling shirt. They'll have to blur it out. <laughs> it's live. They won't be able to blur it out. Oh, that's true. Uh, and it's, I, live, it's not live in a delay? Uh, no, because they curse and shit. Oh. So I think it's live. I don't know. Um, but I will say your, your, your accident kind of reminded me to make sure that you, you focus on what's important in life. You know, you got to cherish things when you have the opportunity so right after i saw that everybody was okay my first instinct is i went down to my garage i gave my car a hug you know? <laughs> i sat down in my camaro for a little bit and I, I just told her how much i love her so i i recommend everybody out there do the same before you know it's too late you ever see the documentary about the people that are in love and have sex with inanimate objects <laughs> uh no but i'm sure ed could tell me all about it um, that there was a, like something you would know about. There was a lady who was like married to the Eiffel Tower. Uh, there was another lady who was married to and bought a piece of one of the roller coasters that were at Knobles. And there was a guy <laughs> who um, attempted to have sex with Airwolf. <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. That's awesome, though. It might not be a documentary. It might have been like a BBC docu series. Okay. And I don't know what the – and again, listen, no shame. You know, I'm just stating facts is all. I'll just Google um, sex with Airwolf later. Yeah, you'll probably find it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, hey, enough about, like, real-world stuff. Let's talk about fake-world stuff in the world of professional wrestling, huh? All right, let's do it. And now, At Odds With Wrestling presents This Day in Wrestling History. So I hope you like clips, motherfuckers. I love clips. All right, got a ton of clips, right? Excellent. Um, let's start backwards here. No clips. Uh, on this day in uh, wrestling history, nine years ago, the World Wrestling Entertainment held uh, their Extreme Rules event from East Rutherford, New Jersey. I know I have New York there, but it's the same thing. Hmm. Um, headlined by Daniel Bryan and Kane in an Extreme Rules match. Um, this also was the Shield versus Evolution, where okay. the next night on Raw, um, Seth betrays the Shield, you know? Yeah. Um, just to kind of put you in a time and a place with all this stuff. But the most important thing that happened on this match, or this this show, was on the pre-show. And this is the ninth anniversary of WLC. I, I will say a couple things about WLC. First of all, uh, my first... Of my many, many, many commentary gigs, didn't I do commentary for El Torito? Wasn't you did. he on the WLC sh- or the WLC, the uh, the micro wrestling show? He certainly but, was. But also the uh, there is a two pack of basics based on this match with Swoggle and El Torito, and it comes with a little ladder and everything like that. And that thing is a fortune. It is hard to. Oh, find. really? Yeah, I, I never I don't want to buy it, but I've always whenever I see it, like I kind of make a mental note. It's hard to find mint on card. Let me look it up right now while we're talking. Uh, yeah. But yeah, th- that is definitely the definition of a match that um, over delivered. Right. Oh, absolutely. I, I don't think I don't have an eBay save search, but I think every time I've seen it, uh, you know, 
hundred bucks for two basics. I mean, mm. I mean, but click on the first one. I guarantee you, the one that's a hundred bucks, I would not buy that. That card is probably bad. As you're in second. Details. Looking at completed. No. Yeah, always got to look at completed. Oh no, it's sold. Yes, yes. At- um, oh yeah, so see that one that I clicked on pulled up error not found. Somebody and then probably I just bought it. <laughs> oh, hang on here. Um, El Torito. So there's a bunch of Lucy's. I don't know, fifty bucks. That ain't ah. too bad. All right, maybe they've come down. Maybe uh, people are less pod pilled these days. It's been a while since I looked for it, though. But it's a cool little two-pack for basics, you know? Oh, for sure. No pun intended on the little. Little. Uh, and see, <laughs> there's one that's old for, you know what I mean? And obviously, kind of mint done card, list. whatever it is, you know, there was one that sold for $93, and there was one that sold for, like, 50 bucks. you know? Yeah. yeah. All <laughs> right. So, uh, all, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, not to derail things to toys this early in the show. Um, so also on the stand wrestling history is our head to head, uh, Monday Nitro versus Monday Night Raw. Um, because the NBA playoffs are still going on, Nitro is two hours at least instead of one hour and one night and two hours on another night, you know? Yeah. Um, again, so much of this top main event stuff for WCW at this time, I have absolutely no memory of. Like when I was doing my research, like, when was Kurt Hanning in the Wolf Pack? I have no memory of that. Yeah, he's more of a black and white guy. From yeah, I I, I, I I knew it was Nash, Conan, Luger, Sting, and Macho. And Macho eventually ends up going out of it anyway. But I have no memory of um, Mister Perfect in the Wolf Pack. You know, no, me neither. Um, and again, Nitro has things like. You know, mid card stuff of Van Hammer versus Saturn, and the loser leaves the flock match. Oh, what a shame to lose one of those guys. Right. Uh, Finley uh, interjects himself in the TV title picture with Booker's T and Chris Benoit. Um, like I said, the main event stuff, your guess is as good as mine. But, you know, if we're talking this era of Monday Night Raw or Monday Night Raw, there's only one thing that we're going to be talking about. Hell yeah. When I think of how you dedicated to your career, to your late father, one thing pops in my head. Your father must be rolling in his grave. Oh, you piece of shit. <laughs> You're a disgrace to your family, Malenko. You're a failure. You could never wrestle. Your brother sure can't wrestle, and your father certainly can't wrestle. And you call your mediocre career a tribute? You call it a dedication? I call it an immense joke. What a good-looking the man. The only reason you got the man of a thousand holes gimmick is the WCW office gave it to you because you're so darn boring. None of these people care about you. Nobody here wants to see you wrestle, Dean. You're better off sitting at home than being in this ring putting people to sleep. <laughs> now, speaking of putting people to sleep, I, too, have someone I'm dedicating my career to. He's a man who knows one more hold than you do, Dean. He knows one hold. He's a much better ring technician than you. That's not saying much. And he's a lot (laughs) more exciting than you, which also isn't saying much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you, Mr. Bore Us Malenko coming down the aisle. (laughs) Let's hear it for Bore Us. (laughs) The height of comedy. (laughs) Boris. Let's have a big round of applause. For the boar man himself, Mr. Boar Us Malenko. The boar man. Jericho's getting a little too much <laughs> on the side of tradition here. He's been putting time in the gym, you can tell that. <laughs> He's a little bit bigger than Dean Malenko. Much better looking, I can tell. He's got a heck of a lot more charisma as well. You can tell he's serious. Look at him, ladies and gents. This is the real man. Look at that of shitty tattoo. <laughs> Mr. Everybody Boris. had one back then. Oh, this, is, this is so degrading and so sad. And it's, it's disgusting. disgusting. It's disgusting. I, don't, I don't even really want to call this thing. Jericho is a disgrace to the WCW World's Cruiserweight title that was around oh, the waist of Dean Malenko on no less than three occasions. Bo- Beautiful natural hair on Jericho. 
<sighs> it looks like a regular human. It's fantastic. I know. Um, now, granted, so over on Monday Night Raw, it's a taped show. Um, you know, Raw still finding its way. Um, you know, we still got a lot of your Dan Severins versus Savio Vegas and your Double J's versus Mark Marrow's at a King of the Ring qualifying match. And that was sure. still Wild Man Mark Marrow, right? No, he's uh, the boxing. He's um, he's marvelous. marvelous. Yeah, okay. yeah. He's been marvelous since like around WrestleMania time. Okay, uh, um, I gotta get my marrow continuity straight. They still haven't like DX are still positioned as heels as they're feuding with both the Disciples of Apocalypse and LOD two thousand. <laughs> they still haven't kind of figured out a place for them just yet, you know, because we just had Owen join uh, the Nation last week, and this week they officially go from being the Nation of Domination to just the Nation, right? Hmm. Um, but we've been having vignettes for some new characters that are debuting in the World Wrestling Entertainment. Now, listen, this is not the stink sheet, so we're not going to talk about Val Venus, because uh, <laughs> that's the show that talks about that. But I would be remiss if I did not play this one. Who is this? Who is this apparition? What could have happened to this man that brought him to this place that made him do these things? Looks so sad. Beating up hobos. That stole his soul. And handed him an empty cup that bled. The first Edge debut pro like vignette, you know? Yeah. This 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 tormented soul, <laughs> just <laughs> sitting in a subway and uh, looking all forlorn and not yet spooky. <laughs> well, he is spooky. He's just not like vampire spooky yet, you know. Uh, I don't know if sad is necessarily spooky because mm-hmm. he looks sad and mad. Yeah, and if that makes you spooky, then I'm fucking spooky. <laughs> Him throwing those like work those working punches on the hobo were the best though. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, nut tap them. <laughs> but we have our main event angle, of course, and that is all the Austin and McMahon stuff. And of course, at the heart of the Austin McMahon stuff is Mick Foley. Um, I, I, I could play all of it, um, you know, and one day I will. But let's play just this, okay? All right. It's not a punishment. That's reward. That's what it is—a reward. Mick with the How do you figure that? blonde highlights Good in his hair. <laughs> Another beautiful man. That you and I are a lot alike. I believe that you recognize this as it truly is. You see, I take adversity and turn it into triumph. I get this run out of my company and I come you back. Have with your best friend is an opportunity. And that's oh. what I give better than anyone in the world. Opportunity. Don't you see? Oh. Can't you clearly see this picture? Who have you been listening to? Because if you seize this moment, if you take your best friend out to this ring tonight, and you not only beat him, would you beat him an inch from his life? If you tear him limb from limb, if you reach into his chest, and pull out his heart and hold it and the blood drips down all over you then you would have made the kind of sacrifice that's necessary to be the number one contender the kind of sacrifice that's necessary to beat stone cold steve austin the kind of sacrifice that's necessary to be the world wrestling federation champion i've got faith in you i've got confidence in you because I believe deep down in that demented cranium, you can do it. You can do it. You can seize this opportunity and nope. once again become the number one contender for the World Wrestling Federation Championship. Mr. Vince would have made a great high school here. football coach. Mr. McMahon is very convincing. When I came least. out here, you threw dude love into my face. How does it feel for me to throw the truth into yours? Oh, oh. 
Slaps him. A big time pe- All right, so uh, we get that built up, and then we have our main event where it's Mick Foley taking on Terry Funk. Austin's on commentary. If Mick wins, he's the number one contender. And uh, again, of course, he does win. We're not going to play the whole thing here because there's an important bit that happens here at the end. As Mick is leaving, we get some famous Stone Cold shots there. Austin, Austin unbelievable shape. Now again, folks, this is a little bit more visual. Oh, good lord. <laughs> You believe this? Wrestling music is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's the owner of this company. Vince McMahon with a dude and with a dude love attire. And yeah, I can't believe it either. Is there a conspiracy? What do you think, Paul? I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It's the Vince. What a maniac. <laughs> McMahon has his man. He has his number one contender. Poor Collette. <laughs> Off Stone Cold is a marked man. I, oh, good grief. Who do you think he is, Dick Clark? Oh, this is... You know that somewhere, some way... I feel like that Vince dancing should be seen more often. Like it's, yes. There's a lot of Vince gifts get overplayed. This, this is something that I see all the time. So, uh, obviously, this is building to, uh, you know, obviously the rematch with Austin and Dude Love at the upcoming pay-per-view. Uh, this is some of, like, the most vivid memory stuff of this era of WWF stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, being a fan of Mick as I was and being a fan of Austin and like to see the two of them pairing up with each other and like where it all goes to is just some of my favorite stuff. You know, so much of the Attitude Era does not hold up, but I think this stuff holds up so much and is so good. Uh, it, it's so tough to overlook this, you know, plus it had to help that. Terry Funk was sprinkled in for you as well. Yeah, for sure. Like, they, they, I think, like, Mick and, like, it's a tape show, but, like, they get, like, 10 minutes on Raw, which at the time where you were talking about matches that were, like, three to four minutes was a long match on Monday Night Raw in this era. Yeah. So the fact that they got 10 minutes and they, you know, when they did a lot of crazy shit in this match, you know, it was really awesome. Um, but obviously, all of this stuff notwithstanding, and, you know, we're going to get into, like, what we liked and what we want to talk about from this past week. Um, but very rarely do I take requests, um, and sometimes things do slip through the cracks, of course, when you're looking things up with, like, air dates and that sort of thing. But I would be remiss, um, obviously, if I did not play this moment that happened uh, 17 years ago today on TNA Impact Wrestling. Oh, TNA. Talk about it all day, but I think, you know, sometimes a picture says a thousand words. That's and, true. Uh, what, I, what I basically did here was I, I constructed a graph. <laughs> oh, wow. And, oh, right. Uh, starts in 1993. <laughs> you see with, uh, with Hogan and what he drew that year, which was after. This is all profits, of course. <laughs> profits to the WWF at that time was $20 million. Bret Hart took over $17 million. <laughs> Nash, as the Diesel character, well over a hundred million dollars. That's <laughs> without my merchandise. Yeah, huge spike in profits. Huge spike. Right there. Huge spike. <laughs> largest, largest grossing champion in the history of, of the business, <laughs> including merchandise. Merchandise would be a separate chart. Of course, Austin, a great run. Austin, nearly, nearly, nearly up there with, with my run, but but nowhere close. And of course, the drastic drop off with with Rock there uh, after the Austin era. So that, uh, in a nutshell, that kind of shows uh, where the businesses went. Of course, at this time right here, the NWO spike that that I, uh, with me at the helm, would have you know surpassed all this and the three hundred million dollars. So really, you just took your spike from the WWF and moved it, and the, yeah, and just moved it over to WWF and, and spiked them too. Right? Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of spiking. Imagine with me on spike. <laughs> 
a question for you. So does this mean that we line up to the rest of the paparazzi production vignettes? Because I want to see all of them. Okay, so yes, we do. However, somebody had just pointed out to me recently that on the TNA YouTube channel, Impact uh, YouTube channel, whatever, they went and made all the video, all the paparazzi production videos private. What the? Oh, man. Right. right so... I'm going to be, you know, obviously on the uh, on the search for those, um, you know, shout out to on this day in WWE history guy who puts stuff up uh, the great Garrett Kidney who puts TNA stuff up all the time. Um, I, but again, I will be making a concerted effort every week on this very podcast to play uh, paparazzi production uh, segments uh, every week. Thank God. Oh, man, those are so good. So good. <laughs> Oh, I still misquote every one of those. Like I still, you know, like I, I was gonna say I quote them all the time, but I misquote them all the time. Ah, listen, yeah. close enough. I say, yeah, you know? good to have a refresher. So again, busy day in wrestling history. A lot of monumental moments. Um, I, I would be remiss not to turn things over to you now, there, Adam. Um, what would you like to talk about from this past week in wrestling? All right. Before I say that, isn't today Orange Cassidy's birthday? Speaking of this day in history? Uh, I don't know. We don't typically... It's also Mr. Fuji's birthday. Oh, but. I figured, you know, mention that. I saw that uh, tweeted out earlier today. But if it's wrong, then whatever. Every day is Orange Cassidy's birthday. But I'm going to start things off with AEW. Surprise, surprise. This is Dynamite. And I want to speak specifically about the Blackpool Combat Club promo that we almost got like taken away from us because it had a little bit of microphone issues at the beginning, but uh, alleged bad promo, Brian Danielson is talking and he makes reference to a certain wrestler. Certain has been his words. How dare that, you? It's his words. Take it up with Danielson that said he was the best. There is the best there was and the best there ever will be. And Danielson took exception to that because to say that nobody will ever be better than you in the future, it's arrogant. And Danielson says that he right now is a better wrestler than that person, which is true. Uh, but he also hopes that the next generation is better than him, even that little shit wheeler Yuta. Uh, I thought it was a great response to like not only like anytime Danielson talks, it's awesome. And I let, I'm a mark for the Blackpool Combat Club, obviously. So take this with a grain of salt. But um, I thought it was awesome, and I thought it was a great response to recently, I don't know if you saw, but Bret Hart was talking shit about John Moxley matches not being real wrestling. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was basically, I, I change the channel anytime that comes on. That's not real wrestling. That's 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 backyard stuff. Uh, but HBK would never say that stuff. He's not an amateur. But I, I really like the promo, and plus the fact that uh, he took a shot at Mr. Hitman just made it all the more better but great promo um yeah yeah it was a good promo um i you know obviously danielson's one of those guys that i think knows what he's doing more than most and uh you know obviously he was trained by uh heart mr heartbreak and uh i'm sure he never said bret hart's name he used a lot of the nomenclature of bret hart's uh, and if you analyze exactly what he says, he didn't really say that he was better than Bret Hart. He just said that it was kind of arrogant for Bret to say that. But again, I it was a good. He, I, I know you're anti Bret, so you're going to jump all over that sort of stuff, you know? I'm pretty sure he did say that he's better than Bret. But. Hmm. Because I wrote I, it. Oh, there you go. I could yeah, probably go find it and look it up, but I'm not going to. All right, fair enough. But yeah, I like even without the Bret Hart shot, you know, mm -hmm. still a good promo. I just like any time Heel Danielson talks. Yeah. What do you got? So uh, it was officially announced this week that uh, AEW Dark and Dark Elevation are done. Oh, both of them. I knew that. Yeah, Elevation both of them are done. Um, as they move forward to the unannounced uh, Saturday show. Mm hmm. And obviously, as Ring of Honor is taking more of a precedent over whatever, and I think it, you know, and obviously everyone has their memories of it, and you know, whether it be workers or you know, fans or whatever it is. Um, I'm just sad that they canceled the funniest podcast in all of wrestling, which is Taz and Excalibur's commentary on AEW Dark. <laughs> and uh, wasn't uh, 
one of the 3.0 guys doing it as well. Yeah, Daddy Magic and uh, Big Show were on uh, Elevation a bunch of times, and uh, they were really good too. Um, but you know, ta- it, like Dark was Taz and Excalibur, like fuck around hour, just like say whatever they want, do whatever they want. Now, obviously, there's a lot of logistics that are going to be in a play, and there's a lot of people under contract, and people are going to wonder where these people are going to go. We don't know if the Saturday show is going to be an hour show or a two-hour show. The rumors of the roster split and how that's going to go. Um, you know, Obviously, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to get those Ring of Honor tapings, and I think the Ring of Honor tapings are going to be on a more um, consistent schedule than what they were before, now that Dark and Dark Elevation are done, but you know, I think they kind of serve their purpose at this point. You know, um, you got to focus more on Ring of Honor and less on just, you know, racking up whatever's um, just giving people. There, there's other ways to give people the chance to get reps, I guess, would be the best way to provide it. You know? Yeah, because, I mean, they're doing the house shows. And... Yeah, that's the other thing. House shows are going to become more frequent here as well. Yeah. Yeah, and in addition to getting reps, it was a way for them back when they used to focus on the the records and the rankings. It was yeah. a way to kind of pad a contender's numbers so that they can be a legitimate, you know, have a reason why they're challenging for like the TNT belt or something like that or the TBS. But all right, uh, I mean, I honestly I haven't watched either of those shows, Dark or Elevation, in a long time. I, I, I did, back when Negative One was frequently uh, a focus on those, I would check those out. And yeah. When he would be destroying people, I would check those out, but it's been a while. I, I still want Ring of Honor on television somewhere, because I'm an old and I'm not going to go look it up on the internet. You know? I get you. Well, it's on when we record anyway, so you wouldn't be able to watch it live regardless. No, but if it was on, like, regular tv i can dvr it just yeah, like that's uh, true just like impact is on right now and you know that's on my dvr not that i'm gonna watch it but it's there <laughs> is to no tonight's no is tonight the trinity fatu debut promo or the trinity fatu debut match i have no clue honestly like my old system used to be to record it and then, like, watch it with fast forward, and whether it be like the old, the old Brian Myers Learning Tree stuff was like a must check out, and uh, you know I would watch the Broski stupid stuff, and then the major player stuff. But now it's like I, t- I got to the point where I turn it on and I fast forward through the whole thing without stopping, and now I just see it on the DVR. And if somebody didn't say, "Oh, oh you got to check this out on Impact," I just delete it. Gotcha. And Trinity is certainly not going to be something that's going to make me watch it. All right. No offense to Trinity fans out there. All right. Yeah. Um, my other thing, and I'll, it's just relatively quick on this. I'm going to stick with Dynamite. Uh, there's nothing from the WWE draft that I even want to talk about. It was well covered on Final Wrestling Place. Uh, it, it moved no needle for me. But So I'm going to stay with Dynamite. Uh, and that is the TNT title match of Wardlow versus Logan Easton LaRoe. First of all, Joe, they disrespect <laughs> Logan. They disrespect him by not saying his full name. All right, it's Easton LaRoe, not just Logan LaRoe. It's Logan Easton LaRoe. Get it right. Second, Logan has to worry, first of all, not his home field, so he's on enemy turf, but he has to worry about that thug, Arn Anderson, at ringside, always threatening to shoot him. He doesn't know if he's packing. That It's dangerous. Then Wardlow hits a very unnecessary and unsafe amount of power bombs for the win. The whole thing was very unfair. Not that Logan needs anybody to fight his battles for him, but I know a certain other VCW superstar that could step up and take on Wardlow if need be. Maybe like a nearly seven foot tall giant hog that Wardlow <laughs> definitely would not be able to lift up for a power bomb. And I certainly know that person would not take that bump. Uh, so Wardlow, watch yourself or we'll send the boar. That's all I'm saying. And they they ain't going to put Wardlow in the ring with the boar because the boar will expose how short Wardlow is. Exactly. Uh, not to say that he wouldn't also expose how short Luchasaurus is. <laughs> um, but I think uh, the boar said it the best himself that uh, it was really cool to see uh, Logan in a segment with uh, Christian. <laughs> Plus, a lot of people have said this, so this isn't my thought, but uh, Logan would have won if the board didn't soften him up. Yeah. So I do want to talk about the World Wrestling Entertainment Draft, Adam. All right, go for it. Um, so I always forget, like, it's one of those things that's selective memory. It's like, okay, the draft happens, but the draft doesn't actually start until 
the Monday Night Raw after the next pay-per-view, right? Yeah, the day after Backlash. Right, which is always like, okay, I always forget that, right? So it's like they're hyping up, like, before he leaves the blue brand, make sure to get your last chance to see Shinsuke Nakamura on SmackDown this week. And I'm like, whatever, okay? Yeah, and it also gives you a chance to, or them a chance to move around the titles that don't make sense for where the brands that they're on. Yeah, and, you know, I remember back to the first draft as they're doing whatever, and in that first draft, Stone Cold was ineligible to be drafted. He had worked some verbiage into his contract that he was a free agent, and he got to choose what brand he was on, right? And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool to give, like, you know, your arguably biggest star, you know, make him feel like a bigger star, right? And you want to have him on both your shows for a little bit, too, as well, right? Mm-hmm. And I know they did the same thing with Brock on Monday Night Raw. Um, they said that he's a free agent. But um, Adam, uh, yes. in the World Wrestling Entertainment draft, do you know how many free agents there are in this draft? Uh, I think they said it on Final Wrestling Place. Isn't it like six or five? Like, I know Ziggler's one of them. Okay. <laughs> There's like random ones, but go ahead. So they, they record uh, Final Wrestling Place before Monday Night Raw. So they added more free agents on Monday Night Raw. Oh, jeez. There are currently 10 free agents, okay? All right. Other than Brock, how many of them can you name? Uh, honestly, I, I don't even remember the initial five other than Ziggler and Brock. Okay. I didn't pay attention enough to any of this. Okay. You got Brock. Okay. Okay. You got Omos. All right. I'll give yeah. you, you know, you're building almost up. All right. Now, you got Ziggler. You've got Mustafa Ali. You've got Elias. You've got Baron Corbin. You've got Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. And again, there's not a knock on these guys. It sounds like, like it's all just job guys that they can move around. Right. Now, these two draw raise some red flags also as free agents are von wagner and zion quinn uh Z i don't zion quinn is that an nxt guy i know von yes wagner. you remember okay. he was the guy who wrestled in main event against tozawa when we went to go see raw oh, okay yeah he was a good looking dude okay he had a good look so, to him is what i mean so these are guys who already have a place in nxt they're eligible for the draft, and they decide we're going to be free agents. <laughs> for what reason? Yeah, that makes that makes no sense. I hate all of this. It's all so stupid. Yeah, I it, I can't even wrap my head around most of it. Like the biggest thing that frustrates me, and, and this happened like whether it was last year or the year before when you have the raw women's champion going to SmackDown and vice versa. And then they do the stupid little belt exchange. Yeah. You know, where they just they, like the first time that happened, I got so mad at it. And then I saw that it was happening again. And it, it pissed me off a second time. Like, again, this isn't the place for it, but like one of them should have been like the women's championship and then the women's universal championship so that you don't have to keep doing this. And, I mentioned last week that I'm a lineage person. I don't know why, but the whole free agent thing, I get having the job people. Cause it's all right. You want to have Ali or you want to have Shelton Benjamin. I'm not saying they should be jobbers, but they're presented as them. You want to just have them pop up on a show to lose somebody who cares what brand they're on. But I get what you're saying that with the promotions, having NXT people, be not be drafted but be brought up on air as being on the main roster but not really very confusing and then they also did the thing where not only did they promote the nxt women's tag champs but they also promoted the people that were going to face them on nxt so like when nxt was over the champion of the women's division is still like on the main roster if that makes sense oh like, right so didn't they do a thing where uh, Indy gets drafted. She's the NXT Women's Champion, but she's yeah. also hurt, so she's relinquishing the title, and they're doing a tournament for it, right? Yeah, Indy's relinquishing, but, like, the two witch ladies, 
Alba Fire and the other one, <laughs> like they're the women's tag team champs, and they announce, oh, they're going to be wrestling the TikTok girls. And then the TikTok, t- the TikTok girls got drafted. So no matter who came out of that match, the winner, you still have the NXT women's tag team belts on somebody that's on the main roster. Well, they they did a promo this week. Even though they got drafted to SmackDown, they said that they plan on defending the NXT women's titles on all three brands. Because that makes sense. That's what they said in their promo. No, I like, get it, but I'm saying that it's almost like this draft snuck up on the WWE and they didn't have a plan in place. <laughs> like, I get it if you said to me, hey, Adam, at the end of this podcast, we're going to do like a full draft. Uh, we're going to rework the entire territory, have a plan in place an hour from now. That would warrant some some continuity errors, but I feel like WWE had... I don't know, maybe a week's notice, maybe two weeks' notice, perhaps more than that. I don't know. And correct me if I'm wrong, they did not break up a single tag team. The only thing I can think of didn't uh, isn't Rhea on, like, Judgment Day. It's not a tag team, but it's a faction. Didn't Rhea go to a different brand than the rest of Judgment Day? That's the only one that jumps out. There was definitely no, like, standard two-person teams that were broken up. It's like... Right. Like, the, the Street Profits weren't broken up. Uh, Alpha Academy, as far as I know, wasn't broken up, you know? Right. So the ones that kind of were predictable didn't happen. It, it I, I saw, because I don't watch either of the shows live, I just saw on Twitter as the picks were coming in, and there was really nothing that was, like, a shocker. Uh, like If anything, it was very paint-by-numbers. I mean, Cody's on a different brand than Roman, so he can get his Cody belts. It's all very – if you were going into the draft expecting it to give everything a fresh uh, paint of coat, it, it didn't happen. Yeah, and, and I think it's just like – it's one of those things, the hopeful optimism in me is like, oh, this will be the year where it's just as good as the first time they did it, and it never is. No, like I, I think I've been numbed <laughs> to the point where, you know – if we didn't have an exciting raw after WrestleMania after Cody lost, like that was my last straw of giving them any benefit of the doubt. Yeah. But. So uh, I got a couple more things. Do you got anything else? No, go ahead. I'll, I'll chime in. All right. Well, um, you know, we, we played uh, the paparazzi rest, uh, the paparazzi production skit uh, earlier, which was the ver- one of the very first ones, if not the first one. Um, and a lot of people, uh, I'd be hard pressed to disagree, say that that is uh, some of the best wrestling skits in the history of professional wrestling. Uh, but we did have a contender uh, this week on TV. And uh, <laughs> far be it from me not to play the entire clip uh, on the show, but we're going to play the entire clip on the show. All right, I'll sit back. <laughs> I know it's very right, visual. Well, camera crews here. They're going to document everything. Perfect. Let's go. This is the house. Wait, are you sure this is the right place, though? Yeah, this is right. I got it tuned up, but man, this place smells like hey, hey, chicken. What? Would you cut that out? Let's go. It reeks, Jay. All right, enough. Chicken. Come on, buddy. All right. What a cute little girl there. Boy. Well, hey, look, we just wanted to say sorry for the misunderstanding the past few weeks, and we thought what better way to make it up to you than to come here and lend a helping hand across the farm. Uh, what are yeah, you going to help? Yeah, yeah we yes. do. That's why we're here. Let's go to work. Oh, let's go, boys. Okay, <laughs> let's go to work. This is the third trail already. Hey, hey, that trailer's full. It ain't full enough. Oh, Jeff, please play one more song for Murph. He loves it. <laughs> we'll finish with this one. You guys may know this. It's my biggest hit. Yeah. It's called With My Baby Girl. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Papa Briscoe. What's up, big man? What's going on? Hey, sir, take my rock. Yeah. <laughs> you good? Chicken, I know you've known Lee through a long time, and he's okay. But keep your eyes on the rest of these clowns, especially the idiot down there in the coveralls. Which one? (laughs) 
both of them. <laughs> Man, Mark, hard work sure is hard work. But let me tell you about some light work this Friday night on Rampage. Wow. We got you a singles match so you can continue your winning ways. Hey, I'm tired. Speaking okay. of winning ways, I beat Cash. Jeff beat Dax. So let's make it official. We are right now issuing a challenge to FTR and the AEW Tag Team Championships in Las Vegas at Double or Nothing. And speaking of tag teams, you beat FTR, didn't you? Yes, Tell sir. us, how did you do it? Oh, is that what this is all about? Hey, hey let's go fishing and talk strategy. Let's go <laughs> fishing and talk a little strategy. Let's go fishing, that's right. Thank you, look at the tag team champion. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Getting ready for the second summer of No Worries, Double J. Oh, my God. So they were teasing that on social media, like, all day Wednesday. Like, Jeff is tweeting it out, and Sanjay's tweeting it out, and they're tweeting out pictures of the chicken farm. And I've been waiting for this. Now, granted, maybe I built it up a little bit too much in my head that Mm -hmm. it was going to be, like, matches between Jeff and Mark, and then Jeff was going to win the farm, and then it was going to be double or nothing. (laughs) Then Jeff was going to have to work on the farm and everything else like that. But I loved every second of this, Adam. This was the best. I, I liked it a lot, too, not having the same fondness for really anybody there that you do. Um, <laughs> but I swear Jeff Jarrett is wearing me down, man. He's breaking the walls down. Every day there's a little bit less of a wall between me and Double J. I worked on so many people on L.A. Night, and I worked on so many people on Double J. And that's going to be my legacy to the professional wrestling fandom, is to get more people on board to be appreciators of Double J and L.A. Night. Yeah, imagine, like, being mad at Jeff Jarrett just because, like, he beat some guy that did a pounce, like, 20 years ago. Like, that. Uh, that's that's really petty. Like, Jeff Jarrett has done more for this business than he's ever taken from it. I, I will say uh, that was a very different time. Jeff is a changed man these days. Um, you know, we, uh, we have to be judged on our entire body of work. Um, yeah. As a performer, Jeff has been in the wrestling business as an on-screen performer uh, for, you know, going on some, like, 35 years. Um, and to take one month's worth of TV and hold it against him, listen, I, I, I understand it, but uh, yeah, some of those people are even coming around too, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, uh, great segment. I popped huge for it. Yeah. And I, again, I'm not, the, I'm not the target demographic for it, but I, I definitely enjoyed it. No. It's, I- it's not paparazzi production levels, though. Hey, give it. Listen, maybe they filmed a couple more vignettes. Maybe we're not done. Maybe this isn't one and done. Maybe we're going to get a series of vignettes. There's still time. Joe, who's cooler, Jeff Jarrett or Kevin Nash? Ooh. Um, okay. <laughs> so I have to make this caveat. All right. Um, we're talking today or we're talking all time or are we talking what? Uh, well, I don't know. Give me both. Give me your reasoning. Okay. So let's say today. Okay, okay, let's say all-time Nash is cooler, okay? Okay. Um, Today, and listen, I love Nash. Nash is a very chill guy these days. And listen, he's gone through a lot over the last year or so in his life. Um, But I think today, Jeff would be a much more fun hang than Nash would be. Nash would be a very leisurely, relaxing, chill Maybe sip a little wine, maybe talk some hoops, you know, maybe (laughs) make some Buddy Rich jokes, you know, that sort of thing. But Jeff, no alcohol is going to be involved, but it's going to be a memorable night. You're not going to forget your night out with Double J. All right, fair enough. I just want an explanation. Yeah. Um, And do you have anything else? Because I got one last thing. No, go for it. All right, and and this happened literally as we started to go to air, and it's, you know, popping off a little bit on social media right now. Um, But uh, a very, um, in a lot of internet wrestling uh, circles, um, if you got on in the, you know, mid to late 90s, even the early 90s, you were probably on the Death Valley Driver uh, video review message board. Um, that's how I found out about, like, internet wrestling outside of keyword AOL, World Wrestling Entertainment. 
Okay. Um, because Stevie, they made a shirt for Stevie Richards, and Stevie Richards wore it on an episode of WCW or ECW TV in 1995. And I looked it up, and I was on that message board, and I was always a lurker. I was never really getting involved in a lot of conversations. I would chime in here and there. Um, but one of the guys that started that message board and kind of kept it going even to this day when message boards really aren't the thing, you know, social medias and reddits and discords and everything else like that. Uh, but Dean Rasmussen, uh, was the guy who kind of started that board. He was like one of the, 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 the big three or the big five as they would later grow on to be of the board. And he, he just passed away today. Um, his folks, his family let out yesterday that he was in the hospital, and he wasn't doing well. Um, they didn't say he wasn't doing well, but they said everything that was wrong. And I'm like, that don't sound great. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just announced that he had passed. And uh, everybody from as low as to me um, to as high as Tony Khan were directly influenced by the message board that Dean created. Um, so, again, my thoughts uh, and prayers and everything with his family. Um, you know, I donated the GoFundMe yesterday. Um, you know, it's just, again, I'll, I'll go grab the link. It'll be in the show notes and everything else like that. But, um, you know, he, he touched a lot of people just by being like their bridge to like different and unique and weird, um, and interesting wrestling in the early and mid nineties into the two thousands and stuff. But, uh, yeah. So I just wanted to mention that here as well. Uh, not to bring the show down, but I, I wanted to mention it. No, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And check, like I said, check out the link in our, our show description, you know? Yep. Yep. All right, cool. Uh, so, um, of course over on the Patreon is going to be the homework where we had watched the January 24th, 2000 episode of Monday Nitro. Yep. That sounds right. Right. And there is no homework this week. Do you know there's a pay-per-view this weekend, Joe? His Sammy Zane's kicking down to the ring. His Kofi Kingston doing his thing. Ruby so Bo. Beyond the show. Brian Danielson. No, no, no. Is it the big dog's yard? Let's find out. Does Joe know the card? That's right, Joe. According to Wikipedia, the most trusted source of all wrestling news and information, the World Wrestling Entertainment has backlash this weekend. It's not WrestleMania backlash anymore. I'm kind of sad about that. But Wikipedia says there are seven matches, none on the pre-show. Do you know the card? Maybe. Hmm. All right. What do you got? Seven matches, you say, right? Yeah, and I'm sure there'll be three more announced tomorrow, but for now, seven. Okay, we got Cody versus Brock. That's one. We got uh, Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest. Uh, That's two in a San Juan street fight. Mm, San Juan street fight. We've got a six-person of Solo and the Usos, because Roman don't do no B-shows. Uh, taken on Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and Matt Riddle. That is correct. Um, we have Seth Rollins versus Omos. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, that's right. Okay. That's four, right? Correct. Okay, there's both the women's titles are being defended, if I remember correctly, right? Yep. Against who? Who is the question? Okay. Rhea Ripley is defending that title against Zelina Vega. That is right. Okay. Bianca will come back to. Um, And I think the U.S. title is on the line. It is. Okay. Because I remember them talking about this in between the draft. Um, is it okay? So that one is like I'm I'm like closing my eyes and trying to picture the graphic, right? Okay. It's um, uh, it's Austin Theory. It's Bronson Reed. It's Lashley. That is correct. Okay. 
I don't remember who Bianca is fighting. EO Sky. EO Sky. There you go. Okay. Um, I had a th- well. Listen, I I'll just say I had no fucking clue. <laughs> um, I got zero interest in this card. Um, yeah, and, and by zero I mean if I hear Cody and Brock is enough of a freak show match, I'll watch it after the fact. Yeah, I'm the same way when I look at this. You know, I've lost all interest in the the Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn versus the Bloodline thing, you know, much like just about everybody. Plus the fact that they're having Riddle leech onto them to try to get over is just, it's desperate. And, uh, yeah, there's nothing else on there. You know, no dis- no disrespect to the women. I'm sure both of those matches will be fine. But, no, I'm not, I'm not watching, you know, DJ's favorite wrestler versus Bad Bunny. That's not happening, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, Cody Lesnar train wreck quality, maybe. Yeah. Like you, like you said, check it out after the fact. I don't think either of the women's belts are going to change hands. I think they're just going to do the stupid swap because I can't see either of these two women losing the belts to the people that they're up against specifically with Bianca having her own little mini Lesnar run or not Lesnar Roman run with the, the raw and Rhea having just won the SmackDown, they're just going to flip flop those on the Monday after the show. Yeah, I hope they do something a little bit more creative than that. But I'm not creative enough of a person to think what that could be. Just maybe rename the belts. <sighs> you know, whatever the hell the the Raw the Cody belt is called. You'll know, rename the women's one to match and then just have the other one be the Universal Women's Championship. That's the easiest way out of not doing a belt swap or having them both drop the belts. Or since the two women's titles essentially just look like the Roman Universal titles, mm-hmm. maybe just debut new titles. Well, that's what I mean by like renaming them. Yeah, but you like know, brand like- new, completely new belts sure yeah i mean if you're going to like call one of them one thing like you let's just say universal versus just the wwe women's title uh having different names or different belts would help as well you know maybe have them match the you know keep one of them as the big w and have one of them be a smaller version of the cody belt or something you know there's there's got to be something or you know they can even do (sighs) bring back the butterfly Oh my god! That's the and that Jonas is uh no no that was uh, uh Mark that was uh Undertaker's big deal one bring back the butterfly yeah <laughs> um yeah I just think they need to have new name like give the belts new names and give them new designs so it's not like so focused on being red and blue where you have to have this stupid thing where they just like literally swap titles you know yeah. And it's weird that didn't they draft kind of we're getting back to the draft that I said I didn't want to talk about. Didn't they draft Sammy and uh, Kevin Owens to specifically? I think it was raw. Yeah. But like they didn't really say, oh, by the way, they are also the SmackDown tag champions. So it really doesn't matter where they go right now. Maybe the thought process is like men's tag team wrestling will be on raw and women's tag team wrestling will be on SmackDown. Even though there were men tag teams that were drafted to SmackDown? Yeah, and they'll just have nothing to compete for over there. <laughs> sure. But, like, but Sammy and Kevin Owens, they literally have a red belt and a blue belt. Right. You know, so that uh, Again, I don't think they knew what they were doing going into this, other than let's get Cody and Roman on different brands so we can give Cody a belt. For Roman to win at next year's WrestleMania. Oh, that'd be so good. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have to make a fourth belt. <laughs> yeah. They just keep making fake belts for Cody to win every month, like or every year. Like here's your consolation prize. Here's your second best belt. Your third best belt. Your fourth best belt, and so forth. You know. Yeah, that'll teach you to start up another company. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, I think that's it for just Joe of the card. But, Joe, I just want to go back to the Patreon real quick. Oh. And just think, I want to acknowledge the fact that this month's uh, monthly Joe Sposo selfie just dropped. 
So go check that out if you haven't already. But I also, I don't know if you saw this, but I put up a poll in the Patreon. Since it's looking like Conversations with Joe is becoming more and more of a thing, and stay tuned for the second episode. It'll be dropping in just a week or two. Uh, I did put up a poll trying to find if they preferred Conversations with Joe or Joe Versations, which I was really trying to get over. Uh, unfortunately, Conversations with Joe was the front runner, mm-hmm. but some people did suggest other things. And one of them, Kevin Hellions, actually said was to name the show Joe Talks to Someone Who Knows More About Wrestling Than Adam. And first of all, I want to say, How dare you? But also, that's a funny name, and I wanted to mention that. But uh, go check out the Patreon. There's some fun uh, discourse going on in there as well. Yeah, and I think I have the next two interviews lined up. Oh, shit. There we uh, go. You know, one is, you know, and obviously we might be straying a little bit from people that were directly involved uh, in the filming or played parts in the uh, Ashes film. But sometimes people, you know, open their mouth and I'm like, that ah, sounds like a legal binding contract to me. So <laughs> we're going to we're going to revisit that come maybe say July. But I got June lined up and I got July uh, on, on, on over the barrel, you know. Excellent. And obviously the Derek Sabata one will be up. I believe uh, we're scheduling for the 15th is looking like when that's going to go live. All right. Whoever schedules those things, that's up to them. Absolutely. Well, it's all those bean pushers in the front office. They take care of all those things. (laughs) Um, So, hey, let's get into some voicemail, Adam. And I wish there was a way that I could just play these and leave the room, but uh, you'll see why. All right. Oh, hello, everyone. Ronald Two Legs here, uh, just calling in. I'm a call for a few weeks, uh, just you know, from that devastating burial I took from Mister Yankee over there, and you know that leads me to my next plan. I know I take a lot of shit from uh, old Van. I don't even know how the fuck you say his last name, but uh, goddamn, we mentioned the card is going to change on the show this week, and now it's just called the card is going to, t- to change with John Thorne, huh? Thanks, Joe. That's just you know. <laughs> Thorn on that show talking to himself. Huh. <laughs> what the fuck I did to get fucking crazy. Jesus fucking Christ. That's fucking bullshit. I guess his son was into the room with all those swears. <laughs> yeah, lead by example, Mr. Two Legs. Come on with that potty mouth. Um, but it, I, I would never slight him when it comes to the card is going to change. I know that Ronald is an integral part to that show. Well, listen, the show doesn't happen without John. You know, it used to be way back in the day. It was John and uh, Chris were the linchpins that, you know, if it, if they weren't there, the, the guys who ran AIW and sometimes Steve Guy is there. What am I supposed to call the show? The C- card is going to change. John Thorne sometimes, but mostly all the time, Ronald Two Legs, and sometimes kind of, sort of, um, Steve Guy, and run-ins by Mr. Whiskers. <laughs> it's too long of a name. Doesn't fit on a marquee, pal. Yeah. But I will just quickly address uh, what Ronald started the call off with, and I'll be brief because I have a feeling that somebody else might have mentioned it as well. Um I'll just say that uh, the New York Yankees are currently in last place in the American League East, uh, but they, if they were in the same division as the Guardians, they'd be three and a half games up on the Guardians. And the uh, Yankees are really bad, but they're still better than the Guardians. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Next call. Hey, guys. This is AW referee Pop of Pepperoni calling. Not going to get into any wrestling talk. I uh, just wanted to say... Uh, one thing to New York Yankees fan, Adam, <laughs> how does it feel when Aaron Boone uh, makes awful decisions to wear cut sleeve hoodies and to remove a guy who's only given up two hits uh, in the ninth inning and to go on losing? Uh, thanks. Love the show. LID for life. Thanks, guys. Uh, Joe, do you want to feel this one before I do it? <laughs> uh, thank you for the call, by the way, Papa Pepperoni. Uh, he was speaking in code there. Um, indicative uh-huh. of a um, Midwest sports team. I'm not really sure what he was talking about. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Aaron Boone is the most frustrating manager on the planet. I love the New York Yankees. I am very critical about the Yankees. Uh, so is Marcus. Again, great, great analysis on the most recent final wrestling place. And I share all of his sentiments. But Aaron Boone is so out of touch 
with not only what's going on on the field, but also like just day to day operations of the team. Clay Holmes is the Yankees closer, Joe. He's terrible. He had a good first half of the season last year, and he's never pitched good since then. But like the Yankees refuse to change the closer. It should be Michael King. And then Boone refuses to to leave good pitchers in. Domingo Herman was destroying the Guardians. They could not touch him. He was having the greatest game of his career. He was eight and a third into the game with like like Papa Pepperoni just mentioned with only two hits. He was going to get a complete game shutout. He had a great pitch count. But no, Boone, who doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground, is like, oh, let's bring in Clay Holmes, the guy who's been super shaky and can't get anybody out. And what's he do, Joe? He couldn't get anybody out, and he fucking blew the game, and the Yankees ended up losing. And then he tried to do it in game three of the series if it wasn't for the fact that the Yankees rallied at the end of the game. God, I hate Aaron Boone. I hate Clay Holmes. I hate Aaron Hicks. I've come around on IKF. Uh, but the moral of the story is the Scranton Wilkes Bear Rail Riders travel to New York and beat the Guardians in another series. So I'm happy about that. Um, typically, I play the calls in order in which they come in. Uh huh. Um, but just to kind of keep this ball rolling, uh, I'm going to play this call next. All right. Hello, guys. It's the strongest man on the land, Arthur MacArthur, here. Uh, a few things to discuss. First and foremost, congratulations, Adam, for the uh, Yankees winning this series. You definitely should have put your way in the last game, but I uh, guess we're just not doing so hot. You know, I guess I could say the same for you guys, but hey, it's a struggle. Fire boon, am I right? Yep. Um, <laughs> and, of course, I have to plug the 10th show tomorrow for AIW, Cybernetico de Mayo 2. If you're in the area, check us out. You know, we plenty of tickets still available. It's going to be a great show, unique match, a lot of different flavors in one match. And not to discount all the other matches that are coming on, like Dom and Cisco Silver, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be a great time for everyone. Check us out. And if you can't, check us on Fight Plus. Now, one thing I want to say as well, my last thing, I've been seeing a lot of um, the trending jokes about Long John Silver's not – being, you know, a real business. Everyone thinks it has, like, mob ties and people are keeping it afloat. <laughs> I just want to say right now, I used to be one of y'all until John Thorne had put me on to how fucking great Long John Silvers is. And let me tell you, it is. I, Arthur MacArthur, am keeping Long John Silvers in business. Are those chicken tenders or planks or puffs? Puffs, I should say, are god tier. So everyone, give Long John Silvers a chance. Hashtag Long John Silvers God tier. That's all I got for now. Hope y'all have a great weekend. Uh, I'll just finish off the baseball talk, Joe, and I'll let you finish with Long John. Um, obviously, as already said, thank you for congratulating me. Uh, Yankees did not deserve to we- to win either of those series, uh, but I will go on the record that the Yankees won both series, uh, and we'll see you in the playoffs most likely. Um, that's if both of our teams don't completely collapse, which is quite possible. But I will say this, despite the fact that the Yankees won two out of three in both of the series, and I believe they're done for the year. So you won't have to hear any more guardians versus Yankee talk until like the fall, Joe. So you're lucky there. Um, but I will say, uh, Jose Ramirez, friggin' great ball player. Uh, Steven Kwan, like, impossible to strike out why does he always get on base he's a, he's amazing um bieber great pitcher a lot of really good players uh, they are amazing on the base paths they're super aggressive other than the fact that miles straw looks like the most dangerous person in a trailer park like the rest of the team is like pretty cool um and like josh naylor um i hope like cole puts a baseball in his ear one day but other than that like i love the other like seven out of nine players on the guardians they're a really good team they're underperforming right now but just like the yankees you know they'll get hot over the summer so uh we'll see in the playoffs um and as far as aiw goes i i completely forgot to do a dust jono the card for it i was thinking about it but it was kind of hard to find the entire card in one spot but I will be watching live on Fight, and I hope everybody yeah. else who's not in the Ohio area gives it a shot as well. Well, if on Tuesday you listen to The Card is Going to Change, starring John Thorne and sometimes uh, Steve Guy and sometimes Mr. Whiskers, uh, also featuring Ronald Two Legs, they had the whole card up there. 
Yeah, um, I have I have that in my queue, but you know what it is, Joe? A couple weeks ago, some podcast that I'm a Patreon of put up like a four and a half hour version of a of a magazine, like a preview magazine <laughs> review, and it completely pushed back. Like every podcast now, is, I'm a couple days off on them because that backlogged me so much. <laughs> We're recording again this week, and it's going to be just as big. It's going to be a crazy episode. <sighs> I enjoy them, but they're a burden on my queue. But uh, Long John Silver's, uh, I'm not a fish math guy. I don't go out to, I haven't been to Long John since I was a little kid. So you're going to have to feel this one. We talk about, I, I, I feel as though on Long Box Heroes, uh, specifically Long Box Heroes After Dark, we talk about Long John Silver's at least once a month uh, <laughs> for the last 11 years. Yeah. Um, we even have a fish math shirt that you can get through our uh, T Public store, thirty five percent off uh, any of your purchases there. Um, but you know, listen to the tales of Todd going to our local uh, Long John Silver's, and there's getting to be less and less of them around. You know. Yeah. Um, and the 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 trials and travails that he has getting his Christmas dinner together with his family of the Long John Silvers, and yes, there was even an episode of After Dark recently where Todd called me out on whether or not their chicken is called Chicken Planks or not, and I played no less than four different commercials <laughs> dating back as far as the early '80s, where in their advertisements they call them Chicken Planks. And then uh, Todd called me a liar. So uh, thank you for your call, Artie. Uh, good luck. Hopefully you win. Uh, I would love to see you uh, be the final one standing in the Cybernetico. And you go on to face and please dethrone. <laughs> Broski. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the promo video they put out today. Uh, Wes and Artie and, and Chuck and the rest of the team, Hardway, they're going to go 8-0. and and then right. that team is going to have to face itself. And then obviously it's going to come down to Artie versus Chuck. And then, you know, you know, maybe I show up and, you know, Chuck uh, goes down. But we'll mm-hmm. see. And uh, again, we're not done with the calls, but I think we have a call that's maybe supporting you. Uh, All right. Here. The rarity. Hey, Joan Adam. This is the reigning and defending general, gender neutral monarch of the mountain, Mr. Pig. Just wanted to call in and say thank you guys for the, the kind words and high praise that you've been throwing my way the last couple of weeks on the podcast. I definitely appreciate that gender neutral bump. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got two questions, one for Joe, one for Adam. I'll start with Joe. Uh, Joe, I think you are a wonderful, fantastic commentator. I want to know, is there anybody that you haven't had the opportunity to call a match or a show with um, that you would like to? Uh, maybe we can plant the bug in um, somebody's ear for uh, an LVAC show or something like that coming up. Uh, and for Adam, the Yankees suck, man. We got a lot of areas of concern and need. What's one realistic trade that you would make to address one of our many, many uh, struggling areas of the season? Thank you, guys. Love you. Love the show. Love you all the time. Um, all the praise that we've sent Boar's way much deserved, you know, the, none of that was home cooking. It was all, all earned, but Joe, go ahead and, and do your commentary question while I think of a, a trade here. Uh, so I ended up being pretty lucky to get a chance to call, um, for better, for worse, you know, a lot of my favorite commentary folks, um, you know, with different parts in their careers and life, you know, I could tell people that I got to call wrestling matches with Joey Styles. I just don't have to say when, mm. um, I could tell people that I got to call matches with, uh, daddy magic. I just don't have to say when, um, I've gotten a call with friends of mine, uh, from Kevin Ford to you, to Mantis to right on down the line. Um, you know what? I'll say this. Um, I would like to call a wrestling match and I've tried to make it work out and, you know, logistics and, you know, whatever. I'd like to call uh, a match with uh, young Ed. Oh, there you go. Maybe, uh, maybe a match at, uh, real rumble. You know, that seems like there's going to be, uh, you know, AIW is not running that weekend. So it's not like he's going to go to that show. You know, maybe, uh, maybe young Ed comes on out. Or June sixteenth, which is the next Sokol show. Don't tell anyone. Oh wait, wow. I just did. <laughs> we'll we'll fix that in post. We'll get that. Eh, I got enough to fix in post. Yeah. Um, as far as the a, a potential Yankees trade, 
See, here's the problem, and I'm sure you know this, Mr. Pig. Yankees have nobody to trade. Everybody in the league wants Jason Dominguez, and the, the Yankees aren't going to get rid of him. Joe, he's like uh, one of their next can't-miss players, but he's down in, I believe, double-A right now. Um, every other player who had trade value, the Yankees hoarded. They hoarded. They said, no, these guys are off the table. And then eventually they promoted all of them. And other than Volpe, they all stank up the joint. So we have nobody that anybody wants. Yankees aren't going to trade Cole. They're not going to trade Nestor Cortez. They're not going to trade Judge. Nobody's going to take on Stanton's contract. Uh, They're not going to trade, you know, nobody wants Jake Bowers. Realistically, the only trade chip we have left is the person that the boar wants us to get rid of every single year, and that's Glaber Torres. And Glaber Torres isn't going anywhere. I want to want him to stay. Um, but if we had to go and get somebody, uh, I had a conversation with uh, Marcus about this, and I think we both agreed that Chris Bryant on Colorado would be a perfect fit because he plays left field and third base, which are two positions that the Yankees are desperately in need of help at. But realistically, it's May 4th, and every team thinks that they're going to make the playoffs since half the league does now. And uh, I don't think anybody's going to trade anybody. So all we can do is uh, do what Mr. Cashman says and wait for reinforcements. And I hate it, and I hate the Yankees, and I'm mad at them. But I wish I had a better uh, better suggestion for you. Um, I will say I had a really good trade in fantasy baseball today. I really reshaped my team. I'm looking looking good in fantasy baseball at least. <laughs> Thank you for the call, Mr. Pig. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to hear from. Right. Next call. Hello, gentlemen. Kevin here. Uh, Joe, glad you're doing all right after your adventures this week. Uh, so, guys, I was watching NXT. Cause someone has to. Mm-hmm. And Gigi Dolan and Jason Jane had a match. And in the previous week, they've been bringing up uh, Gigi Dolan's family history. Uh, abuse, neglect, bad things. Um, saying, Gigi saying uh, he wanted to be a wrestler to earn a lot of money and provide a better home for her brother. Very sweet story. So they're doing a, a scene there where BC Jane is beating Gigi down right in front of her brother. Gigi screams to Gigi's brother, does this remind you of home? Oof. And I was just like, holy shit, what a line. Like, it didn't offend me or bother me or anything. You know, I know this is a show, but I'm like, wow, that was, that was harsh. But then it got me thinking like, well, you know, I was fine with it. I could see people that may have thought it was too far. So my question is, guys, have you ever heard anything on wrestling that despite it being the show, despite whatever else, you're like, ooh, that's, that's a little too much. That, that may have been going way too far with what you said. Or if I was that person, I would have been upset and hurt, offended by it. I don't understand why they're not. So anything that, you know, may have upset you while hearing it. Um, that's my question. My plans for the next couple of days are to wake up in the morning, listen to this show, then listen to the Patreon show. And then, if Joe does know that the card, I'll watch Backlash as well. So if you, oh, wait. Isn't there AIW Cibernetico de Mayo? Gotta watch that. That's what, Friday night? All right, cancel your plans, guys. We're all watching AIW. Talk to you later, guys. Bye. (sighs) I don't know of something that recoiled, like, my sensibility that I can kind of point at now. Because a lot of stuff that I used to really like is now, like... I I think that my tastes have evolved. So, like, when... Like, if you watch a lot of stuff from the Attitude Era or ECW around that time, like, now looking back at it, you could be like, oh, man, that's in bad taste. But, like, 19-year-old Adam thought it was hilarious. So it's hard to, to be a, a good judge on this. There is a promo from the early days of TNA um, where it's Vince Russo and Roddy Piper. And in the promo, um, you know, obviously this was we're working the boys and everything's a shoot and all this other stuff. And in the course of the promo, uh, Roddy blames Vince Russo for the death of Owen Hart. And at the time, I was like, "Ooh, that might be too far. 
And mm-hmm. even just sitting here thinking about it, I'm like, ooh, that was definitely too far. Like, I think at that time, Owen had maybe been passed for, like, three years, you know? Yeah. Um, And it was just Russo trying to, you know, capitalize and do what he could. Um, You know, obviously, there's there's times where um, I think people's real life. um, So, so that was one um where it was just bad taste bad form and bad idea altogether and another one and it's not so much a pr- one promo particular but it was like the entire program um remember they finally pulled the trigger and did Jeff versus Matt Hardy in WWE as like a WrestleMania match yeah and they did a a thing about like Jeff's house had just burned down and then they say that like Matt caused it. Yeah. And like the fact that like he lost like a couple dogs in the fire and it wasn't like a fire. His house um, <clears throat> exploded. Um, must, must have been a lot of propane tanks. I guess. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 <laughs> and then like they tried to spin it into the angle that Matt is the one that sabotaged it. And I'm like, and a lot, you know what? And then like toward the end of his last WWE run, we're like, was it his feud with Sheamus or was it Corbin where they like set it up that he got like pop for drunk driving again? Yeah, they they wrecked or made it look like a car was like wrecked into a pole. But like yeah. Jeff ran away from it. So, yeah, a lot of that stuff, like especially like the like it's like, oh, this happens. And then like a week later, Jeff legitimately has that happen in his real life or it happens in Jeff's real life and Jeff's all fucked up. And, like, let's make it into the storyline of the angle. And, uh, listen, you know, I I think Jeff needs help. Hopefully he gets the help. Hopefully uh, the stupid uh, final deletion thing that's going to be on Rampage this week is a way to hopefully write Jeff off. Like, they brought him back, and they can write him off TV while he goes and gets the help that he needs. Um, But, yeah, I don't like that sort of stuff. Yeah, I remember the the house fire one. Now that you mention it, being kind of awkward, but the most recent one that you mentioned with like Corbin, that didn't bother me as much because I I have very little sympathy for for Jeff Hardy these days. You know, I, I got no sympathy for Jeff Hardy either, but it's still in bad taste. You know, nah. All right, cool. Thanks, right, Kevin. Th- thanks for your call, Kevin. Next call. Hey there, Joe Adam. It's the other JB here. Uh, thank you for getting to my call last week. I know it was running late, so making sure to get it in in well enough time for this week. So, yeah, thank you for all your uh, picks about Diamond Dallas Page. Um, for this week, um might be a little bit uh, one of the more trickier ones. Um, going back a little bit, uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine, uh, let me know. Um, I've seen his uh, dog collar match with um, Piper. Really like that one. So curious to see what else um, he's got. All right. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. If you talk about picking somebody that I will have zero contribution to. You got nothing? No. Why would I? He barely existed after 1990. Okay. So, uh, you know, obviously, um, JB, thank you for your call, by the way. Uh, you said you watched the dog collar match with Roddy Piper. You saw Greg Valentine's best match, right? Um, the other problem is so much of Valentine's like really, really good stuff is from the late seventies. So if it exists, it's in really bad quality. Like he had some really good matches at Madison Square Garden with Bob Backland. He, he had some good matches in mid Atlantic with Ric Flair and Wahoo McDaniel and stuff like that. But that stuff is so far and few between like that stuff that existed only in like magazine pictures. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you want good greg valentine stuff um a lot and that's the other thing is uh, you know so a lot of other greg valentine's best period didn't happen technically on tv but it happened on like when wwe would do like oh we're gonna put boston garden or we're gonna put maple leaf garden or we're gonna put msg uh from like their networks are on tv right So late 84 into early 85, he had a program, a series, a feud, whatever, with Tito Santana. If you can find any of those matches online, I don't even know if any of them are on the network, 
But if it's in 1984 and 1985, it's a singles match with Tito Santana. And then they had, like, gimmick matches as well. They had cage matches, lumberjack matches, all sorts of stuff like that. That's the best stuff. That, that's the next best stuff from Greg Valentine that's available. Where it's available, I don't know. But Greg Valentine, Tito Santana, 1984, 1985 is your best bet. Um, the tag team with Brutus Beefcake as the dream team into later 85, early 86 runs real hot or cold, depending on how much beefcake is in the match. Mm. Um, but the, I think I remember the WrestleMania two match with the British Bulldogs being okay, but I think that's more about the Bulldogs being really, really good at the time and Valentine still being able to go and Brutus beefcake being there. Um, but yeah, I'll say the Tito Santana, uh, matches from 84, 85 are your best bet. If you're looking for good Greg, the hammer Valentine stuff. I'm surprised you didn't have a bunch of rhythm and blues matches. So to mention, no, most of those stunk. Um, (laughs) I will say this, um, when I get the time and my druthers about me, um, we're adding to the list. What do I have in the list? I'm going to make you watch SIDS run an ECW. Yeah, the Lex Luger's like Lex Luger's 1989. Yeah, and Honky Tonk Man's 1987. Oh, that that's a bridge too far. <laughs> Adam, I'm telling you, you're gonna as an adult, you're gonna have such a different appreciation for uh, the old honking tonking man. All right, and my question for other JB, let us know like where are you getting these wrestlers from? Like you're a young man, you weren't even alive when when. Greg Valentine was in his heyday. Why, you know, it just seems like a, a I don't want to say an odd question, but like a, a, a out of left field, if that makes uh, sense. JP's cultured. He wants to, you know, he wants to examine some of the classics, you know? All right. If that's the case, you know, just let us know. I'm just curious. He is letting us know. That's what the segment is well, for. He's letting us know who he wants to get recommendations about but he doesn't say why all right you know like what led him to go from ddp it's not like he saw a ddp versus greg valentine match and was like you know i want to see more greg valentine you know something had to be the catalyst for it i get what you're saying like what's the bridge between these wrestlers i'm yeah, like how did now. we get to greg valentine off Who's of done? ddp you know all right picking names out of a hat no oh, maybe he's doing that you know john cena hat no oh. I'm going to eat that hat one day. (laughs) All right. All right. Pink button time. Last call. It's young Ed. Hey, Joe and Adam. It's Ed. Um, Hey, I got a question uh, for, for you, you two. Um, If someone in the soon to be naming network, um, hypothetically, or in a hypothetical battle royal, and uh, it was hypothetically in in the area that the majority of the soon to be named network um, lives. Would we all hypothetically have to meet up at said hypothetical Bear Royal to support that person? I'm just asking um, hypothetically. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck was Tim and Marcus' deal this week? It's... Marcus said Cruiserweight Wrestling is stupid. Right. Then they both made fun of the uh, WWE Cruiserweight title from the glory days of 205 Live. That beautiful <laughs> purple strap. And then they say they don't get the appeal of I think you should leave and it's not funny. This is insane. It was all very personal attacks on me and I think they're jealous of how much money I make. I'm rich. <laughs> hey, bye. Um, I, I love the fact that Ed is, uh, uh, now that he's a company man, you know, trademark, copyright, Ronald Two Legs, uh, like he's dipping his toes into more of the network. I mean, I'm sure he's always been a longtime listener of all these shows, but like now he's really like, he's taking notes and making a point to, to bring it up. Um, but like, I, I will say just as far as the battle Royal thing goes, obviously we mentioned last week that we were going to have to go see friend of the network, the boar, if he wrestles against broski, like that was going to be a network meetup. Uh, I definitely think that hypothetically, if somebody else from the network was involved in a hypothetical battle Royal, uh, that would also require us all to go. Plus we can be reimbursed by Ed. Uh, for gas mileage, you know, because he's the one with the the fat checks. Um, Joe, thoughts? 
Um, well, again, a lot of hypotheticals there, um, you know, but once Ed makes it uh, clearly known um, when this hypothetical battle royal is taking place, I'm just going through my text to see if he told me when it was. <laughs> um, like, if it was hypothetically, like, September 9th, uh, hypothetically in the Poconos, hypothetically alongside Colossal Con... Um, these are all hypotheticals that I think would almost be a mandatory uh, meetup. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, honestly, we should all just go like these are people going to Colossal Con. Like we'll all we're all going to be giants compared to them. Like we could run that territory. Ed, oh, you need backup. Let us know. It's very excited to be in a, a wrestling battle royal, you know? Yeah, like, uh, if you need me to lawn dart somebody into the side of a trailer like Rey Mysterio, you let me know. <laughs> mm. <sighs> That'd be good times. But, uh, yeah, I agree, Ed. Uh, I-, I don't know what that TV show was that Tim and Marcus were running down. What did he say? So, you, I, you, I think you should leave? Yeah. Like, I- I've never seen that, so I have no thought on it. But if they say it's bad, I agree. But I don't agree with the uh the hate on the cruiserweight wrestling uh i get it that uh it is now in style to be on the side of the big men and i get it i mean i'm a hoss myself but i do appreciate cruiserweight wrestling as well and so uh, i get where you're coming from there yeah i definitely think this was a uh, a hit on you specifically ed um i think i i saw their show notes because i subscribed to their patreon Mm-hmm. Um, that in their show notes it just said "fuck Ed," and they decided how could we stretch this out to twenty minutes? I think it said "harshy Ed," and you were just oh. blank, you know? <laughs> but it was underlined four times, so so they were serious. Uh, but again, I, I would be remiss, you know. I did move some of the um the calls around a little bit so that all the baseball stuff would line up for Adam to deal with. Yeah. Uh, this week. Um. But I will say, if you want um, a little bit more passion behind your baseball rants, go listen to the first 12 minutes or so of this past week's episode of Final Wrestling Place. Boy, Marcus sure really cares about baseball. (laughs) And I agree. Like I said, I agree with everything he said. And I would have went into not nearly as eloquently, but I would have said many of the things that he said. But he covered it so well, and I don't want to steal his thing. Otherwise, I would just throw it at the end of our show in its entirety. But go listen to it in its original. Yeah, yeah. Go listen to it where you're supposed to listen to it, you know? Exactly. You know, let them get the ad revenue. All right. So, and hey, thanks everyone for uh, all your calls this week, right? No, absolutely. Uh, I mentioned the call as well. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I mentioned during the, the the calls there, of course, head over to our T Public store, 35% off any of your purchases. And again, T Public, you can get those designs on shirts and cell phone covers and notebooks and all sorts of stuff. Um, that helps us out a little bit when you make those purchases through there. Uh, we also have our eBay affiliate program. Uh, when you click on links to various merchants on this site and make a purchase, this can result in the site earning a commission. Affiliate programs and affiliations include, but are not limited to, the eBay Partner Network. Yeah. Allegedly, I'm supposed to be paid out for the first time on the 10th on this. We'll see how that works out. Ooh, fingers crossed. Spending yeah. is free. Baby. It's been, th- it's been three months, you know. <laughs> they're waiting until there's a windfall of money you know they want to hand it to us in like a giant bag with a dollar sign on the side of it yeah yeah as opposed to like a roll of dimes you know (laughs) exactly right um i'll just say that if you want to give these people bags of money uh that you should try listening to these podcasts and those podcasts are long box heroes long box heroes after dark final wrestling place we need wrestling porch talk Viewer's Choice, Wrestling Cheers, Indie Wrestling Guide, Wings on Wings, and Hiya Boosie. Hiya Boosie, Hiya Boosie, uh, of starting to pop up on your favorite podcatchers. Even Google? Well, listen, Google's fucked. Nobody listens to podcasts on Google. Uh, but um, there was a tweet that went out from uh, the soon-to-be-named network account with a link to... The uh, RSS feed. Young Ed figured out how to make an RSS feed for his podcast. And all you got to do is point your podcatcher of choice at that. And that will help populate it into the podcatcher for other people to find through that podcatcher. Ah, well, I just checked Google Podcasts and it's still not there yet. Damn it. 
I want to delete this Spotify app. You realize I not only downloaded Spotify for the first time, but I also had to create an account just so I can listen to Hayabusi. It was worth it. It was, but like I want to delete that app. So get on Google and fix it. I could send you the, the the actual MP3 file. But I've well I, again, but that doesn't help me, you know, in four to six weeks when the next episode comes out. I could send that to you when I get it too. Ah. <sighs> We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll have the Google thing figured out by then. But did you purge anything this week, Joe? No, no. I took that out of the show notes. Eh, we tried it out. It was a dead segment. I'm good. Yeah. We, we <laughs> forgot it like the last two weeks. All right. It's, I'm going to delete it from my notes so I don't mention it. So let's just go to the best part of the show then. Some might cost a little. Some might cost a lot, but I'm the $100 Vansky, and your figures will be bought. <laughs> All right, Joe, we'll get into some of the hard-hitting news in a minute or two, but I'll ask you right up front, you buy anything? I did. What? All right, let's go. What do you get? All right, well, um, I had to get uh, replacement uh, coffee filters for my coffee pot. I don't Jesus get just, like, the paper Christ. ones. I have, like, a fancy gold tone one, you know, like a reusable one. And it started to get, like, a little crease in the bottom, and that crease started to open up and up and up. And then it completely ripped at the seam, so... I had to go to my smaller coffee pot, which has a gold tone filter, waiting for the big ones to come in. And this time I ordered like four in bulk, so I never have to worry about this again. <sighs> it was a practical you, purpose. I need my coffee every morning. I, I also bought K-Cups this morning. I'm not going to mention them. Well, listen, you want to talk about purchases? That's what I bought. Something for me. We're talking about shit for me. Like, okay, did I go and pre-order the goddamn new Zelda game for my kid for the Switch? Yeah, but that's not for me. That's for him, you know? Yeah. He, he paid for he paid for most of it, you know? Yeah. Um. Did, didn't cover taxes, didn't quite have enough? No, so I made him cover taxes, right? But he had gift cards. Um. He had um his allowance for the month. Uh, this fucking game is 70 bucks. Is this for the Switch? Yeah. I didn't know Switch games were up to 70. I know PS5 games are. This but one like, is, you know? Yeah. I and mean, they, he, they can. It's Zelda, you know? Yeah, that's the thing. And, like, I he had, like, when they announced it, he really had no interest in it. But I guess, like, the scuttlebutt on the schoolyard and the playground was all of his buddies are getting it. So he's yeah. like, I want it. And I'm like, all right. And then, like, I so he had a gift, he had a gift card left over from Christmas. He had his allowance. I had um, GameStop certificates, like GameStop, like bucks for like being like whatever the fucking member is thing, right? Yeah. And then I think like uh, his out of pocket expense on this is fifteen bucks. You know, okay. not counting not getting an allowance this month because that goes to that. But like, you know what I mean? Like I went and I did the physical purchase, but that wasn't for me. That was for him. You know, we've been buying like little odds and ends for shit around the house. But, like, the coffee filters are for me. <laughs> all right. All right. I, I, I guess, you know, I, I guess all that's live. But you really need to start buying some toys or some cards or something. Or, or I some got a bunch of stuff comics. pre-ordered, you know. Um, right. I don't, There's no cards are really interest in me. I know Pat tried to get us to go in on one of the, the boxes that he's doing for his sports card thing. But that's, that you, feels like gambling to me. <laughs> you mean Pat, star of the card, is going to change? Mm, is he really the star? <laughs> a co-star? Mm, yeah, I think he's like more of a supporting player than anything else. <laughs> oh, see, that's mean. I would never say that. And I got, I got one last thing. Again, nothing major uh, either. Uh, but I purchased the latest Atomic Elbow fanzine. Um, you know, I would typically buy these um, as they would come out on a regular basis. Uh, from the great Robert Newsom, who's someone that I've met through, 
you know, he's a southern indie wrestling guy from like the Georgia area. I got a chance to meet him when Chikara went there some like 12 years ago. Um, you know, and I always feel bad that I would always miss whenever he would like put a new one of these out. But this one specifically has a real nice, fancy Ultramantis black cover. Um, I don't know who the artist is on it. Um, they are not credited as far as I can see here. Um, but there is a lengthy write up uh, on Robert's trip uh, from Georgia up to uh, the December LVAC show. Okay. That's cool. That's yeah. that's wrestling adjacent. I like it. Yeah. All right. I, I did not really have a big week. I had nothing until yesterday. Um, I pre-ordered because uh, I guess in advance to like May fourth, which I, I'm a Star Wars guy, but I fucking hate all this May the fourth shit. Like, <laughs> let's let this die. This this is almost as bad. As the Mario D Mario Day being March 10th, just because it looks like Mar 10 looks like Mario. I fucking hate that too. But enough with the 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 May the fourth. But because of that, like a bunch of Star Wars stuff got announced yesterday, and some of it got went up for pre-order today. So um a new Mandalorian Black Series figure went up for order today. It'll just like it's a general release, so I got it on Amazon. Um, but here's the best part of it, Joe. It's the first Black Series series with the plastic again. I'm so happy. Oh. They're back. Like They did announce... I'm, I'm shooting you the picture. They did announce some new Black Series figures that are still in the cardboard boxes. But I guess because this is not coming out until like the end of summer, it's in the series where they're going to start doing plastic again. So I'm pumped about that. Cool. Uh, and like I do have... Uh, I don't want to say every Mandalorian Black Series figure because there is one limited edition like initial release that I think it's like a $300 figure. Uh, and I have the same exact figure just in different packaging and I can't justify paying all that money just for like a first edition box. I mean, it's it's Mandalorian. It's not Azrael. Let's not get crazy, you know? Yeah, let's definitely not get crazy. <laughs> um, the only other thing I bought is I do have an eBay save search uh, up for some, and we've talked about this with figures, but I, I have save searches set up for very old pre woo 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 Hawkins and Ryder stuff. And I, I bought on eBay and like this was, I'm going to shoot you the picture for the two of them. It was less than, I would think it was like $10 and four cents shipped. But uh, back in 2008, exclusively in Europe, there was a line of cards that Tops put out that was called Attacks, and it's kind of like a playing card game, you know, like a Magic the Gathering or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, cool, cool. And these were, like I said, exclusive to Europe, and they are the first Hawkins and Ryder cards because they did have a card the year before that I do have, but that is a Major Brothers one. So this is like the first uh, where they're like the Edgeheads. You know what I'm saying? And you could see the prices on the listings. They, these were super cheap, but I will point out Broski was uh, almost triple the price of Hawkins. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I grabbed those just because there's really not much of that old stuff that I don't have. I'm still missing two Hawkins figures, but you know when they pop up and they're super cheap like this, I'll grab them. But, Absolutely. Um, it's, still, it's still so funny to see them looking like that back then, you know? Yeah, yeah, where you, if you just kind of squint, they kind of look alike, and Broski didn't have a hair full of topics up there, you know? Oh, boy. <laughs> Go bald naturally, man. It looks good on me. Uh, <laughs> but that's all I got for purchases. Um, I guess, Joe, I, I do want to talk about, uh, assuming you're done with purchases, right? Yeah, that's all I got, just those two things. Um, I do want to talk about a certain controversial topic. About a, an item that went up for crowdfund. And I am pleased to announce, Joe, that the Engineering Beaver plush by Real <laughs> Silver Engineer is 335% funded. That's right. Crowdfunding works. I still have not backed the beaver, uh, but I do have eight days left to do so, and I probably will. But uh, hashtag back the beaver. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, that's really the only crowdsourcing, crowdfunding thing that I can think of, unless you know of another one. 
What the hell is that beaver from? I have no idea what this thing is. <laughs> and nor should you. It's uh, there's a YouTube uh streamer like or content creator that I follow just plays games. He's an Australian guy or a British guy uh, called Real Civil Engineer, and he has a series of videos where he plays uh, a game called Timberborn. And all Timberborn is is it's like a city building resource management thing, but you control beavers, but the guy is hilarious. Like he's really, really entertaining. Uh, and because he's like an architect in real life, he, or I'm sorry, he's an engineer. Oh God, that's blasphemy. He's an engineer in real life. He's always shitting on architects and it's just a recurring bit from the, uh, the YouTube show. So it's one of those things where it's like, if you don't, watch the youtuber and he's got like a million subscribers so i'm sure somebody listening to this has heard of him um but like you wouldn't get the bits and like that beaver pops me huge so i i will buy it for 30 bucks you know at some point before the the campaign campaign ends yeah so i know a lot of youtubers go through different variety of things selling their own merch you know i've bought a ton of stuff like that for my kid over the last like two or three years. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting to see that they're doing a crowdfunding for something like this, as opposed to just selling it outright, you know? Uh, well, this, this company that they're doing it through is called make ship. And oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it, what they'll do is it's just like, Hey, if I forget what the original amount was, I think it need to have 200 pledged. So it's like, if, if 50 people wanted them, I guess it just wasn't worth the squeeze to, to go into production for it. So they're like, all right, if we're going to make a minimum of 200, then it's worth the money to go ahead and do it. You know, it's, it's the same thing as this other crowdfund thing we'll talk about in a second. I guess like the more people order it, the cheaper the materials get, the more they can justify it. So like, I, I've seen a lot of YouTubers that I follow sell like plushies on this makeship. Um, so I guess it's just a way to just, Hey, you know, Let's not order a hundred of them and then I'm going to get stuck with them. Like if you and I wanted to make plushies you know, and like sell them, uh, if we did it through this website, we could say, all right, if there's enough interest, great, we'll make them. But if nobody wants them, they won't make it. Therefore, you don't have a, a, a closet full of uh, Vansky plushies. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's just a way to just be like, all right, if nobody wants them, we don't we didn't go through the trouble of making them. Gotcha. That's why they use these. But uh, I do want that beaver. It's awesome. Uh, but Joe, you have on the screen right now. We have about a day and four hours left for the nitro entrance stage, which I I get it, man. There's a lot of people like in our circle who just have made it their life's business to just shit on this the last couple of days. And it's not for you. That's fine. But I don't know why it's just like they're just constantly like like they're just rallying against anybody who want this. That, that's kind of annoying. But go ahead, Joe. What do you got for us? I haven't seen anyone say anything negative or positive about this thing for like the last week. Oh, um, well, I don't want to throw him under the bus, but we'll talk off the air of who I've seen shitting on it. Okay. Um, but I did see that they finally got Big Terry uh, to talk about it. You know, a day left. Uh, a little too Ray late. Ray Mysterio also uh, tweeted it out today. Oh, too. he did? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, like, that would have been a great video or thing to have out, like, a week ago or two weeks ago or right before the campaign launched. Not yeah. a day before it's over. Yeah, because here's obviously if the like the the base thing, and we've talked about this ad nauseum, so I apologize to anybody who doesn't care. But the show's over. You can you can go away if you don't want to hear us talk about this. Um, the base level is Scott Steiner, Rey Mysterio. So they those two people. I don't know if Scott Steiner has any kind of social media, but Rey Mysterio does. If this thing gets made, that's a payday for them. Am I not mistaken? Like, don't they get some type of... It's, I'm sure it's not a lot, but they get a taste. I assume uh, so. And, like, obviously, you know, uh, DDP, if his gets made, DDP gets a taste. He has social media. Hulkster, obviously, as you mentioned, he has social media, and he's not one to turn down a fucking dime. So, like, you would think that at some point very early, they'd be shilling it because if this thing gets made... 
you know, maybe they make 5,000, maybe they make 7,000, maybe they make 8,000. The more that gets made, the more money is in their pockets. So it is a head scratcher that they're waiting until the last minute to do that. And I, I didn't personally see it, but I guess somebody in the major group was saying that they mentioned it on NXT this week. And like had like a, a, a Chiron thing on the bottom saying like, oh, less than 48 hours left. To, and that was the first time it was mentioned on WWE TV. Like if all this stuff happened a week ago, it probably would have been funded already, you know. Or but, at least closer than it is right now. It's a two thirds of the way there with, yeah, as Adam mentioned, you know, with an, a day and change left. Yeah, because it ends at midnight West Coast, me, midnight Pacific tomorrow. Um, so like it says the sixth, but it's, I looked it up and it's, it's basically midnight West coast, uh, on Friday. Um, it did get a significant amount of people after just dragging for the, the last like two weeks of us talking about it. It got like 1200 people in the past week. Yeah. You know, cause it was like 2100 or something last we talked about it. So it is up to 3,337 out of the 5,000. Um, I still don't think it's going to get made, but I am watching it. Like I left it for dead two weeks ago or whenever the last time we talked about it was. Yeah. I don't think we even talked about it last week. Yeah. Like I, I used to have the, the thing on my phone and I'd refresh it every once in a while to see where it went. And like, it got to the point where you'd go like five, six hours and refresh it and it would, wouldn't move up one. So I kind of just gave up on it. Um, so I still don't think it's going to get made, no. but I will watch it. And, uh, you know, tomorrow night, this time, 11 o'clock tomorrow night, if it's funded or even if it's like a couple hundred away, I'll jump in because like I said, I want it, you know, uh, I want the stage. I don't care about the figures, but I want it. So, uh, I just won't bother unless it's close. And I know that's counterproductive because me jumping in is just another incentive because then somebody else might see me jump in and they'll jump in and it might snowball, but I'm just going to wait, you know? Yeah. And again, you know, 1200 in the last like two weeks is, you know, the track that it's on, it's going to need, it needs 1800 in the next 24 hours. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. I don't think it will. Like I, I see again, people in the major group, they're like, Oh, that's the same pace that the new gen was on. We have the new gen, like, was 250 bucks so it's a it's a different story Mm -hmm. we'll see so next week this time we're recording uh either i will be the new proud owner of a still a year away uh, nitro insurance uh or we'll just mention that it didn't get made which is more likely exactly but that's all i got joe like i said light week for weekly purchases for me Good, good. Uh, you got to start saving those pennies as the uh, summer of worries uh, approaches, I would assume. <laughs> Every summer's a summer of worries, Joe. Yeah. Uh, but hey, everyone, thank you very much for listening. Uh, this was episode 240 of Add Outs with Wrestling for Adam. This is Joe saying be safe out there and enjoy some wrestling. You're listening to the soon-to-be-named network, the Lamborghini of Podcast Networks.